the number one Costa Rica real estate and investment podcast, bringing you experts from all over Costa Rica. Good afternoon, guys, and welcome to episode 187 of Costa Rica Real Estate and Investments with me, your host, Richard Beckson, coming from a very hot Costa Rica at the moment here. It's March 2024. Uh, for anyone that's listening to this or listening to it in the uh, in the future, um, I suppose you wouldn't be listening to it in the past. But anyway, um, basically very, very hot this time of year. Um, it's kind of the hottest time of year here. We kind of start to transition a little bit as we get into April. We start to see some rains here in the Central Valley. Uh, but the northern Guanacaste areas of Costa Rica probably won't see it until the end of May, start of June. Um, so I'm waiting for those showers to come in just because it's beautiful. Uh, it kind of reduces the temperature. It's a little sticky at the moment. But uh, thanks very much for everyone that's been reaching out to us. Um, there were quite a few people that was like, look, I had to listen to like 15, 20 episodes before I kind of really wanted to reach out to you. But you can reach out to us anytime, info at investingcostarica.com. And that's info at investing, that's I-N-V-E-S-T-I-N-G, costarica.com. We help people do a lot of stuff here. Uh, we're buyers, reps. Uh, when it comes to buying property here in Costa Rica, we're owners reps when it comes to construction. Um, but really, we just take care of you. Uh, I, we're a pain. In, we're we, we're a pain in the butt, so that you don't have to be. You guys get to enjoy kind of all the niceties of buying, and we just make sure here uh, that you make the right decisions. As I say, nobody uh, gets burnt or loses money under our watch. So remember, info at investingcostarica.com. Today, we're going to be talking with Andreas Osborne from BuildTech, the company that focuses on using steel structures in buildings in Costa Rica for speed and also strength. So they've worked all over the US, Latin America, developing hundreds of homes, commercial and residential buildings. So we're going to be talking to them about their experience uh, in construction and kind of the pros and cons and his advice. Um, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. Good afternoon, Andreas. How are you doing? Hey, Richard. Uh, I'm great. How are you? Very, very good. I, again, I think we're both chuckling here because we just did a podcast that I forgot to record and now we're redoing it. So I uh, I profusely apologize. I say I do it every one, one in every 100 episodes. Yeah, no worries. It was my first podcast. So this is this is my this second, is your second one. one. Wow, fantastic. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> let's get straight into it. I mean, you know, uh, 2023 was rising interest rates, inflation, you know, the US real estate market, you know, somewhat on a downward term, turn here in Costa Rica has been on an upward turn. Um, markets seem to have stabilized at the moment, you know, at the start of 2024. But I mean, how have the volume of your inquiries and work been in 2024, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, well, um, our work volume has been high, mainly because of three big projects that we uh, started in the last semester that are still ongoing. Uh, well, in fact, we just finished one of them, the Ritz Carlton in Papagayo, where we installed 300,000 square feet of, of, of roof structure. So uh, this and the Waldorf Astoria and uh, in Punta Cacique and Solaris in Conchal, all at the same time made us increase our capacity last year. Uh, our head count in the office doubled to be able to match our capacity with the work volume. And uh, I can say that in th that in the last six months, we were focused more on our execution than in increasing our sales. And uh, well, that said, the inbound inquiries this, this quarter have been similar to last year's first quarter. Uh, we expect this year to go, to continue as good as the last one. Most of the projects we're involved in are from foreign investments. So we, we expect that to continue this year. Cool, oh, man. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, we're kind of, you know, seeing kind of a bit of the, you know, a little bit of the same. I mean, we're crazy busy here, but I can say in general, um, you know, things are a little slower than like the craziness of 22, 2023, 20, but definitely much higher than 2019. And I think, you know, foreign investments can continue to pour here into Costa Rica, uh, especially with the uh, political climate in, in North America as well. I think a lot of people are looking to diversify a little bit outside of the US, even a little bit of their portfolio. Uh, and Costa Rica is a very good, good and safe place to do that. So, um, so yeah. Totally. I mean, maybe you can explain to us, you know, kind of what built it is, what projects you guys worked on, because you mentioned three very large projects there, but do you guys do smaller projects? I mean, give me an idea of what kind of projects you guys work on. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, Biltec is a vertically integrated company that designs, manufactures, and uh, installs finalized cold form steel structures. 
uh, for those that are not familiar with construction, it's like wood framing, but with but with steel. And uh, instead of being uh, stick built, we assemble all the wall panels, floor joists, and roof trusses in our production facility. So what we do is known as panelized steel framing. And uh, our goal is to make construction better by making the, the process faster, more predictable, and, uh, and cost effective. Uh, we chose steel frame to do this because it allows us to assemble all the components offsite in a controlled environment where you can have, of course, better quality uh, assurance, can compress the construction schedule, and uh, also reduce the labor needed. Uh, and this last point is really important in Costa Rica because it's getting harder to 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 get labor you now that there's a labor shortage in the U.S., you know, and uh, many workers from here are, are moving there because they can earn five times what, it, what, what they earn here. And um, so, so Billy has 11 years in the market uh, and has delivered over 300 structures. Uh, we started with, with single family projects 11 years ago, you know, in Costa Rica, the traditional system is the regular block construction. So it wasn't easy at the beginning um, because we had to go against what was normal here. Our first clients, in fact, were uh, the technology advocates who believed that technology, technology should improve construction and wanted to give it a try. And uh, also, of course, the foreigners who were familiar with, with light construction. And uh, since then, we have developed the skills, the team, and the know-how that allow, allow us to be involved in bigger and more complex projects, the, like the ones we, we were talking about. And... Um, and the culture here has changed in the last years and Costa Ricans are more familiar with light construction. So I can say that things have, have aligned for us. And uh, well, maybe I can mention some of the projects we've sure. worked on. Um, we, well, we were with Ritz Carlton, Waldo of Astoria. Uh, in those projects, our scope was only the, um, the roof structure. And uh, we also are work we're working in Solaris Punchal, that is a project that consists in four buildings, and we are installing the structure of the penthouses and external walls in all the levels. And uh, but well, these are non typical projects for us because most of the time our scope is the complete structure, you know, with the wall panels, floor joists, joists and roof trusses, and uh, maybe some examples of of these projects are um, in Zapotal, we're we're working. Uh, in the many structures for the back of the house. Uh, we built journey school in, in, in Wacas. We built uh, 97 houses in Playa Tambora for, uh, named uh, Brisa del Mar. We did that uh, turnkey. Uh, so uh, in, in, in this project, we could prove all the benefits of using steel framing, you know, because we were involved in the, in the complete construction process. And uh, and steel framing is very flexible. We've been involved from high end houses in Papagayo to simple regular houses, uh, mid rise residential buildings, schools, warehouses, supermarkets, uh, commercial yeah. projects, everything. Yeah. Oh. I mean, how much quicker is it to build with you guys than doing regular? Uh, and and how is the cost compared to building you know with regular with brick and concrete here? Well, uh, you know when. Uh, a regular construction here, a house can take you eight months, 10 months. Uh, and I can say that with steel framing, you can save half the time of the, of the, um, how do you say what it is? The, um, oh, the, uh, the, um, I mean, well, basically the shell, right? The gray, the gray work, gray work. You, you can save half the time in the, in the shell yep. because the first you start the same, but you can save half the time in the shell that is, it's really important. It, it can you can compress your construction schedule a lot, and uh, and the cost. Well, it depends on many factors because, for example, if you're going to to build a small house like a two thousand square feet, maybe it's it's cheaper to 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 make it with conventional uh, block structure. Yep. But if you're going to to do something bigger or more complex or repetitive. It will be it will be definitely better with with steel framing. Yeah, it sounds like again is I mean, look, from what I know is it's quicker to build, which means if you need to like if you're in a time limit and you're kind of riding up to that high season, you could take advantage of that high season instead of being in construction during that high season, which could be huge. I mean, you know, through those three, four months could generate, you know, 50, 60 percent of your revenue. So it could be, you know, 
Um, yeah, actually, we're building a couple of hotels that must be open for uh, December. You know, and yep. uh, we're the only option to do to do that. Yeah, I mean, Bishop's conventional block takes, you know, I mean, a hotel can, you know, take upwards of like, you know, 14, 16 months sometimes, depending on how big it is. So, I mean, what parts of the process do you guys manage and what parts do you not manage? Okay, so uh, we're, we're really involved in the design and construction phase, but we do like to be involved in the projects from the early stages to advise our clients on the best way to solve them. Uh, when a project is what we call framing friendly we help our clients to make it efficient by making small adjustments uh, in the design uh, we don't do the architectural design you know the client must have his his his, his own architect but um, when the project is not a good fit for for steel framing we also advise our clients on the structural system that may be best for the project you know we only want to, to add value to our clients uh, so if we're not the the best option we will be the first to to let to let them know uh, we don't want to to lose time or or make our clients uh, lose time, and uh, our process we begin with a uh, with a structural design. Uh, we we include the foundations design, and uh, if you need like retaining walls or uh, that sort of uh, concrete elements, we also do that that structural design. Of course, also the the, the steel framing. Then we go. We continue with uh, beam modeling. We model the structure in our software. Well, it's it's not our software. It's uh, we sure. use frame machines. Uh, so we use FrameCut software. Frame, software FrameCut is one of the biggest and well known cold form steel machine manufacturers in the world. And uh, so we we model every wall with exact. Uh, length, height, uh, stud spacing. Uh, we model the floor joists, the roof process, and basically everything. And uh, from here is that we get the production file that goes to the to the machine. And uh, the next step is the manufacturing and panelization. That's the part of the process that happens in our production facility when we produce all the profiles to the exact length and we assemble them in panels and trusses, and then the, we transport them to the to the side where we finish with the, with the structure installation so that's that's our typical scope and for for big projects like if you have 20 30 uh, houses and if they're repetitive uh we we can also add something uh yeah. more towards scope. we're flexible with that so i mean basically is if someone's building a single family home it's work with an architect and then from there kind of then chat with you guys um you know about then when you have to go to con when you have to start building construction documents, I would say, you know, then you can t bring you guys in to, to figure out what to do. With a schematic design, we can give a quote to the okay. client so he can compare uh, if uh, we are the best option. Yeah. And we start there. We we talk with the architect. We we do all the process with the client. So, so uh, yeah, that's, that's oh. how it begins. I think the good thing is you're just going to tell a client if you think it's just not right. Like if it's not worth your time, it's not going to be really worth theirs. It's better to just say, look, it's better that you just stick to conventional, regular, you know, you know, block construction. So I think that that's smart totally. of you guys. But totally, totally. What mistakes do you think people make when building in Costa Rica? Because, I mean, we've seen them all. But, I mean, what mistakes do you – what are the big ones? Yeah, this is a good one. And uh, I think that real estate is local, right? Yep. So uh, you need to know the – how things move in here, all the particular processes to build uh, here. And uh, Costa Rica is a small place, uh, but foreigners though, often the, don't have the network to check the references. So I think that the biggest mistake people make when building in Costa Rica is choosing the wrong team or local partner uh, or not having one at all, because you need that local part that will help you avoid making a lot of, of mistakes during the process. And uh, also, when you're choosing your GC or the subcontractors, then go for the cheapest one, saving money because someone is cheaper might be one of the costliest mistakes you, you can make. Uh, of course, when you're doing your numbers, you may be tempted to go for, for a cheaper option because on paper it looks great, but when you but we'll know what, what can happen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean and in Costa Rica, like in every everywhere else, there are very competent options, but also a lot of of unprofessional companies that uh, can give you a long and bad headache. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's your project is only as good as your team. 
Um, you know, and the, I agree the cheapest is not always the best just because, you know, I mean, we've picked up projects before where stuff's been underbid and they're like, look, we'll get the client into the project, get them eight months through, you know, and then tell them that like, hey, you need to put in another hundred or two hundred thousand dollars. I've seen that happen a lot. So, you know, I think it's really important to have someone and and quotes to compare against here, you know, and bring because what we do is when we go out to bidding, I mean, we break it all down from gray works, roofing, electromechanical, everything. So we can see where these variations are. And we've gone back to people before and been like, dude, you're underbidding this hugely because we know, but also as comparing to everyone else, like it's half the price of everyone else. Why is that? You know, and then there's usually a mistake or they forgot something. And if you'd have gone ahead with them, they would have been like, hey, we made a mistake. You need to pay for it. Like, you know, because then a lot of the time they're not going to take responsibility for it. So, totally. Totally. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, what do you think are the best up and coming areas to invest in Costa Rica, Andreas? Yeah, I, I, I would say that Guanacaste uh, is still the best area to, to, to invest in Costa Rica. There are some uh, hot spots in the recent years like Tamarindo and uh, Nosara that are yep. still growing. But I think that there are huge opportunities too in nearby and less known towns. Uh, also, I've been hearing a lot of, of Uvita, Dominical, Ballena in the southern part of Costa Rica. Um, and uh, you can still buy land at a reasonable price there. And I think it's growing a lot. Uh, in fact, we're currently installing a three-story building here and we had a couple more in the past two years. So I think this is, this is a, a good area too. And uh, well, I was telling you that uh, last month I, w I went to my to La Fortuna with my family and uh, I was impressed. I, I saw a lot of tourists in all the restaurants. Uh, everything was full, waterfalls and hikes had a parking lot full. And uh, it's it's a very nice place with a lake, with a volcano. There's a lot of land. So I think there's 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 a lot of opportunity. Of course, I'm not a. I'm not an expert in this in this topic, but uh, that's what I can I can say, uh, you know. Yeah. No, I mean, we have two projects up in Aranau at the moment where, I mean, the reason the clients are doing it is because we directed them there. Like we just looked at the numbers and it was like, look, that's where to, there's a huge opportunity in that area. Land is a little bit less expensive, but the occupancy and average daily rates are great. And uh, there's just nothing, it's not anything from a vacation rental point of view is that's luxury. You know, it's all luxury hotels. <laughs> And those hotels are getting just as much money as the beaches. Like, you know, it's it's incredible. So, yeah. yeah well, yeah. my last question for you, if you inherited $500,000 and had to invest into a business or real estate in Costa Rica, where would you invest it and what would you invest it in? Well, yeah, I wish. <laughs> uh, well, I, I have a real estate investment now. Uh, this is personal aside from, from Biltec. I bought a lot in, in, in Guanacaste. And uh, I, will, I will build for houses. With Biltic, of course. Yep. And, uh, I think uh, with half a million, uh, I would do another project like this one. It's for the U.S. market. Uh, it's high-end houses. It's in Playa Negra nearby, near the near the beach. So I think that's uh, what I would do. But uh, also, I think that buying a piece of land in Papagayo, Nosara or Santa Teresa, not in a prime location, but located well enough to build some houses for staff living. Um, there are a lot of Costa Ricans that work in these places and must travel long distances because there are no places affordable for them. So I think that that is also um, a very good idea. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Look, I know a lot of people that live out of the beaches, Santa Teresa and Osada, and it's so difficult to find anything good. So I think it's an it's a it's something that not a lot of people are looking at because they're either looking at serving you know vacation rental high end markets and no one's thinking about who's going to service all these. So uh, so yeah, I think I think that's a great idea. Well, Andreas, it's been a pleasure to do the podcast again with you. I appreciate you uh, having patience there <laughs> on recording it. Um, for anyone that wants to contact Andreas or know a little bit more about Build Tech, all the contact details are in the description. But very much appreciate your time, sir. Yeah, thank, thank you, Richard, and thank you for my first two, two podcasts. <laughs> no worries, buddy. Have a good one. 
Interesting podcast there uh, with uh, Andreas uh, from BuildTech. Again, it's a steel framing company. I think if you're going to be doing multiple homes, it works. If it's just one home, it probably does not. Uh, again, there are limitations with it, but it's uh, one of the huge advantages of speed. So if you're looking to get commercial buildings up, it's very useful. Roofing for large you know, hotels or even just hotels where it's kind of repetitive rooms over and over again, I think it, it, it could be a huge, huge advantage from a speed point of view. Uh, and again, you know, I mean, as he mentioned there, he's got a hotel that wants that decided to use them because they can be ready by Christmas and open up over Christmas, January, February, March, uh, and basically make a lot of money during those months rather than having to wait for another year cycle to pass. So, uh, so yeah. Um, I hope you've enjoyed listening to the podcast, guys. If you have, give us five stars, pass the pod, recommend it. Uh, if you need anything in Costa Rica, please feel free to contact us, info at investingcostarica.com. That's info at investingcostarica.com. Uh, we have a number of investment opportunities here. If anyone wants to chat about them, you can just email us. Um, but until the next podcast, thanks very much for listening, guys. Bye. The number one Costa Rica real estate and investment podcast, bringing you experts from all over Costa Rica. 